When people talk about AI coding tools, they usually talk about one thing, speed, rapid prototyping, vibe coding, spinning up things in a flash. And sure, that's part of it, but it's not all of it and it's not the most important part. An AI agent is just another tool in your tool belt, like a debugger or autocomplete. And like any professional tool, you need the skill to master it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Dreamflow to go beyond simple prototypes. We're gonna prompt Dreamflow to set up real production grade architectural patterns. I'll show you how to prompt like an architect so you can build code bases that will last. Okay, so let's jump into Dreamflow here and we're gonna create a new project right here and it's just gonna be a habit tracker. So we're just gonna call it habit T create project. And when you create a project, we're just running flutter create under the hood to scaffold out a basic app. Okay, so here's my scaffolded out app. I've got my agent open over here. Now the main thing you want to do when you're building with AI is you want to work in small, iterable and testable steps. So I'm going to just start out by creating some of the files and folders. So I'm going to say I would like to create a habit tracker app using layered architecture and provider for state management. So I want the agent to create the files and folders, but don't write any of the code yet. And then I've got this architectural diagram that I'm just going to paste in a real basic app right there and send it off. Now, as that's working, let's open up our code view right here. And you can see that it's building out all of these files, but with no content in them. And that's great. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, great. The agent is finished. We get a summary of the project structure, which is exactly what we passed in. That's great. And we can see all of our files and folders here and we can look into them and see that they're not actually populated with any code yet. That's great. I'm also going to tell the model, I want you to add these architectural decisions in an architecture.md file. And I'm doing this so that as I'm working, it's always referencing the architectural decisions that we've made. Okay, great. The agent has created this file. And if we go into it right here, we can see it's going to be layered architecture. We're using provider and we've got some data regarding the file structure. Okay, that's beautiful. So we've got this project set up and let's say we wanted to build out another feature. Now, of course, I could ask the agent to do this or I can do some of the work myself. So let's say I want to add a feature for a new motivational course quote each day. Well, first I would need to go into my services to add a quote service. So I can just go into here and I can right click on service. I'm going to add a file right here and I'm going to call it quote service.dart. Then I'm going to need a provider for that. So let's add a file here for our quote provider. And finally a widget for this. And I'll just do the same thing. Daily quote card. Now, obviously, the next step, I would want to go into my main.dart and add this to the multi provider. I would need to add that new widget on our home screen. But you can see the pattern of how we would build here in a way that's scalable and maintainable, not just passing off one prompt to build the whole app. So let's take another example. And this time, let's do a slightly more complex architecture and slightly more opinionated decisions here. So we're going to do another habit tracker. And it's going to be habit complex. Let's create that project. Okay, so for this app, I'm going to say I want to build a habit tracker using feature based architecture. I'm going to use Riverpod for state management, Go Router for routing, Dio for networking, Freeze and JSON annotation for data modeling and serialization, shared preferences for simple storage, and Intel for internationalization and localization. Now, same thing as before, I don't want you to write any of the code. Just create the files and folders and add dependencies to the pub spec. Okay, great. Now let's just add the architectural diagram and send it off.
There we go, adding all the dependencies. That looks great. Checking the pub spec. Okay, that's great. Let's check out the file structure. We've got our features, just one feature for now, our posts with our three layers right here. That looks beautiful. Now, if I were to continue working on this project, I would probably delegate the agent to configuring the basic routing, setting up provider scope. Then maybe I'd focus on the domain layer of our first feature, habits. And once again, the idea is working in small, iterative, and testable steps. So the big idea is that by prompting Dreamflow with specific architectural patterns and libraries, we've laid the groundwork for maintainable production grade applications, not just throwaway prototypes. This isn't vibe coding and it isn't magic. These are powerful force multipliers, but their output is a direct reflection of your input. A vague prompt gets you a vague result. A professional, architecturally aware prompt gets you a professional code base. And this fundamentally elevates your role. You spend less time on the tedious setup and more time on what really matters, the high-level design and the core logic of your app. It shifts the essential skill from just knowing how to code to knowing how to communicate a complex system. So remember this process. Think like an architect prompt in clear iterative steps and review the output constantly. Treat the AI agent not like a magician, but like a junior developer who's fast and smart, but needs your direction and review. You are the lead architect. Mastering this conversation is a new essential skill for developers, and it will save you countless hours of refactoring down the line. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one.